What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is tackle three problems that you should definitely expect to see on a test, a quiz, or your homework that you're gonna to need to know to be able to pass. What separates these problems from other ones is you're gonna to have to simplify by factoring. And that's one of the first things we always try to drill down with my students is whenever you have rational expressions, even complex fractions, always look to factor. Now in this example, it's not too bad, but it's definitely something you should recognize is this trinomial in the denominator over here. So there's nothing really I can do with two over X minus one. There's really nothing I can do with a three over X minus four, but six over X squared minus five X plus four, I can factor that out. And the reason why factoring is going to be so helpful here, because what we're going to want to do is eliminate our denominators. I don't want to multiply all my denominators to find the LCD. I want to see if there's anything in common that they have. So let's go and factor this denominator here. Remember, whenever we have a quadratic trinomial, we know we can break that up into a product of two binomials, right? So the first two terms is going to be X and X, right? So it's going to give us X squared. Now we need to figure out what is our last term. So what two numbers multiply to give us four, but that's going to add to give me a negative five. Now, again, since that's a positive four, they're either going to be both positive or both negative. Well, since my middle term is negative, they're going to be both negative. The only two numbers that multiply to give me four are two and two and four and one. And obviously a four and a one multiplied to give us five. But again, since my middle term is negative, that's going to be a negative four and a negative one. Now I'm just going to put a cross through this denominator here and say, all right, here is my new denominator. Now, again, you could combine these fractions if you wanted to. Then you have a fraction over fraction, which you could simplify. What I like to do is find the least common denominator of all of my denominators and then multiply every single term by that denominator. So in this case, what we have is an X minus one. We have an X minus four. And then we have the product of X minus four times an X minus one. So the least common denominator that all three of these denominators evenly divide into is going to be an X minus four times X minus one. Now, again, some students still get confused with this concept of finding the LCD with polynomials. So again, I just want you to understand the whole purpose of multiplying everything times the LCD is what's going to happen is our denominators are going to evenly divide into our LCD and therefore we're going to eliminate the denominator. So when I multiply everything times this LCD of X minus four times X minus one, what's going to happen is I'm going to lose this fraction. I'm going to lose this fraction and I'm going to lose this fraction. So if you're a little curious, let's go ahead and multiply it out and go ahead and see. Okay, so now you can see basically what I did is I multiplied everything times on my LCD. And again, that's so important to do to make sure you're creating what we call equivalent fractions. Now again, technically when you're multiplying these by fractions, these are all in the numerator, right? So our denominator is going to be one. Now, again, you can put parentheses around this if you really want to, but you don't really need to. But sometimes I like to do it just so you can recognize that, oh, look at everything separated by multiplication and the X minus one is the same in the numerator as well as the denominator. So therefore they're just gonna divide to one, which is just gonna leave me now with a two times an X minus four. All right, now on this side, what we're gonna have is the X minus fours are gonna divide out with each other, and that's gonna leave me with a three times an X minus one. Now in the denominator here, notice the X minus fours divide out and the X minus ones divide out, and that's just gonna now leave me with a six. So now what I can do is just go ahead and simplify my numerator by applying the distributive property and then go ahead and combine like terms. Now, as an example, we have a fraction divided by a fraction, which if you remember in the first video, I basically said, whenever you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can just multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator in the top and the bottom. However, in this problem, the first thing we wanna do before we even do that is go ahead and simplify. And I recognize here that I don't have a quadratic trinomial, but I have a quadratic binomial. And whenever we think about quadratic binomials, what I want you to think about is the difference of two squares. So in this example, we can definitely go ahead and factor this into an X minus five times an X plus five. Now, a key mistake that students will make at this point is they'll just start dividing things out because they recognize like, oh, I have an X here and I have an X here. Let's go and factor them out. Or I have an X minus five here and an X minus five here. Let's go ahead and divide them out. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to understand is when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, we can simply rewrite that as a multiplication problem. Again, for instance, if I had like one half divided by one fourth, that is really the same thing as one half divided by one fourth. And remember, one half divided by one fourth is the same thing as one half times a four over one. Whenever we have that fraction divided by a fraction, it's really just the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of your denominator. Now, in this previous video, I kind of went through it step by step that you can definitely go and check out if you're a little bit confused. But again, for a problem like this, it's pretty straightforward. So therefore, I'm just going to rewrite it now as a multiplication problem.
And again, just make sure you use the factored form, right? That's one of the key mistakes that students will kind of forget is like this factored form. Some students will even factor like divide out the x squared and the x squared. Just be very careful with this. So now we have everything factored and it's just really important to understand that everything is really separated here by multiplication. Now, sometimes students will still make mistakes with the x squared over x. So what I'm going to do is you don't really need to do this, but I'm going to break down an x squared into an x times x. Okay. And then this will be a x minus five. And then in my denominator here, I'm just going to rewrite this as an x minus five times an x plus five times an x. Okay. Now we just go and recognize what terms are separated by multiplication. And therefore, whatever is exactly the same in the numerator and the denominator, we can go ahead and divide out. So these x minus fives we can divide out and only one x we can go ahead and divide out. Now you could have subtracted the powers if you remembered the rules of exponents. But again, I just wanted to kind of show you it in the factored form. And now in this case, what we're going to be left with is an x over a x plus five. All right. Now in this example, you can see there is a lot going on. We have a lot of fractions and a lot of different denominators. We only have two that are same, which is our trinomials. And then we have the x minus two times x minus three. Now, again, one of the pitfall students will make is they say, well, how do I find the LCD of all of these fractions, right? Am I just going to multiply all these fractions? And that would be huge. That would be a very, very complicated problem if they had nothing in common. So it's not always the case, but more often than not, these denominators are going to have something in common. So a simpler tip, if you want to find the LCD of complex fractions and you need to be able to factor an expression is look at the expressions that are already simplified. A lot of times those are going to be part of the factored form of what needs to be factored. So what I'm trying to say then is if I was to factor an x squared plus x minus six, it's probably going to contain either both or at least one of the factors x minus two times x plus three. And again, in this example, which is a fairly basic example, you can recognize that, hey, x minus two times x plus three is exactly the factored form of this. So you don't need to be a factoring master to understand a problem like this. Just look at your other factors because more often than not, those are going to be part of your factored form in your other denominators. So now you can actually see the denominators have a lot in common. All of them either contain an x minus two or an x plus three. So therefore my LCD in this expression is going to be an x minus two times an x plus three. So what we've done in these previous examples is we've multiplied every single term by this LCD x minus two times x plus three. Now, rather than writing it all out, we multiply everything times the x minus two times x plus three. Now we go ahead and distribute that to each and every one of these terms. But in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite everything out so we can exactly see how everything gets divided out. Okay, so that's a lot of writing. So I definitely understand if you want to go ahead and do some of this in your head, but I just mainly want you to be able to see if even if you are doing this in your head, just recognize this x minus two, right, is going to divide out with this x minus two. Here, both of my denominators, my x minus two and my x minus three are going to divide out. Here, again, the exact same thing is going to happen. These are all going to divide to one. And here, just my x plus three is. And again, this main idea of multiplying everything times the LCD is look what happened to my denominators. They all evenly divided into my LCD. So if that is not the case, you either did something wrong or you found the wrong LCD. So now let's just go ahead and simplify my final answer. Now, again, here, I'm going to have to apply distributive property over here, and I don't really need to apply distributive property with my one. I can just rewrite this as an expression as an X minus two. Now we can just go ahead and combine our like terms and then go ahead and simplify the expression. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that this expression actually divides all the way down to three because once I factor out that three, my X plus ones go ahead and divide out. Now, these are great examples that you need to know to be able to pass your test. But if you're really looking to step up your game and get that A and make sure you can understand the most difficult problems that you might encounter, then go ahead and check out the next video where I go through three difficult problems of simplifying complex fractions. But if you just need a couple more examples of simplifying complex fractions or would like to take a look at the notes and resources I provide to my students inside of my courses, then go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.